Okay, welcome back to uh, my run through of uh, Tale of Vaniera. Uh, this is level two, which is called Too Late. It's called Too Late because I've arrived home at my Elvish compound to find it destroyed. Um, here's my compound here. I know it doesn't look very destroyed, but that's because uh, even after all these years, Wethnoth doesn't have destroyed Elvish terrain types. But I've uh, just trust me, the place is wrecked, and I'm really pissed about it. Uh, in this camp. In this campaign, uh, I've been given a free level two unit. Uh, his name is Bramon. That's very nice. Um, gotta gotta love the free stuff. Uh, because we're playing on hard difficulty mode, he's um, he's just a regular old unit. But um, in the lower difficulty levels, he's actually a loyal unit, which means he's free of upkeep costs, which is always a lovely thing. Uh, our opponents here are Lavinians, um, like we met in the uh, in the in the prologue, uh, and some auxiliary units who are sort of support troops for the Lavinians. Um, they work a little bit differently, but we'll explain that as we go. Uh, so, starting off uh, as much as possible, my aim here is to kill off those auxiliary units. So I'm going to send these two level twos to try and kill off their boss uh, as soon as possible. Um, and then I'm also going to recruit some some pretty much cannon fodder units uh, to try and uh, yeah take 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 territory from the enemy as soon as we possibly can. Uh, has this guy got quick? No. Great. There we go. There's a quick one. Okay. He's going to come in handy. Um, so the Lavinians, um, big difference between them and the Marauders that we met last time is that they're a uh, lawful faction, so they fight best in the daytime. Um, if we're going to fight them, uh, we want to fight them in the nighttime. Because I'm bad at this game and because this level only has 16 turns, um, you really don't get that much choice. You're going to have to fight them, you know, whenever the, you meet them, basically. But, um, if, you know, if you were good at this game and you had the time, um, you were better at this game than me, you would, um, you'd find a way to fight them at the night time. Uh, the Auxilla don't care. They're just a neutral faction, so you can fight them whenever. We want to fight them in night time because we're better in the night time, but it's not really so important. Um, yeah, that's, that's the game. So, I'm just going to get these wanderers out as fast as I can, um, grab the early villages, uh, and or sort of zone some some territory. Uh, that was that's a poor choice. Undo that. We'll go grab this one over here because I know that this guy's fast and he can get all the way to that village. Hurrah! Uh, yeah. So Auxilla, um, they're level zero units, so they don't have zone of control. You know, uh, that means we can walk anywhere we need, want near them, and they're not going to force my units to fight them, which is nice, because um, that means I don't need to worry about getting any units that can ignore skirmisher like the Fury. I can use him uh, to do that, but I don't need to because not important. Now, the reason I'm not, I could recall back most of my units from the other camp, uh, from the other level. Um, the reason I'm not doing that at this point is that um, I want to keep most of them for a little while because this first line of troops are, they're probably going to get get themselves killed. Um, that's, welcome to the Imperial Era. It is a incredibly deadly era because there are basically no healer units um, and everything deals way too much damage. Um, it's probably what, you know, people in the real world would call balance problems, but it's more fun to just consider it sort of deadly. So it's deadly. Uh, so yeah, these auxilla are going to come out and try and fight me, and uh, because it's still night time, I'm going to deal a pretty pretty decent amount of damage, which is why I tried to get my guys out there as fast as I could. And, you know, I don't mind if these guys die, but I really want to deal some damage to as many enemy units as possible. Uh, just going forward. Oh wow, nice nice hits there by the windlasher. That's that's handy. Okay. Uh, so, killing an auxiliary unit uh, only gives you four experience points because a level zero unit uh, only gives you four. The lightning is not working. Oh, I don't want to change. It was working in the last level, wasn't it? Nothing's changed since then. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So, um, our aim here is going to be to try and kill this enemy leader um, as much as possible. I'd like to try and bait him out of where he's living there, but. Um, because he's got a reasonably high level of caution, he likes to sort of stick around and just wait. So should be able to deal with these auxilla with my other guys. Don't need to don't need to rush out and deal with him. Famous last words. And what I am going to try and do here is, is get as many people north-ish as I can. Sort of want to use this natural barrier of trees in this section to stop too many legionaries getting through. 
because uh, legionaries are real damage dealers, and when the next daytime comes, I'm gonna I'm gonna not want to be close to them. So we're gonna start getting those. We'll finish up getting our veterans in there because uh, we're gonna want them. But I find on this level, I generally want to use all my monies and uh, recruit recruit everything I possibly can because you never quite feel like you've got enough units. The only way to really get around that is to take your leader straight to this uh, straight to the auxiliar's base, so that when you kill them, you can recruit your last couple of units there, which is what I'm going to aim to do, provided I can kill him off. Um, so these legionaries, they're, they're pretty slow, but um, they're real tanky kind of units, real hard to kill, especially since the night time is ending now, so I'm going to be at a real disadvantage when I'm trying to fight them. Um, I'm going to try and fight them in the forests as much as possible, because they're lousy at fighting in the forests, they're just not elves. Um, you can see here, is we have got to sort of let the fight happen, I can't focus too much on other stuff while that's happening. Game won't let me. There he goes. He's come out to. He's come out so we can beat him up on that village. Uh, yeah. So you can see the legionaries here. They've got um, amazing defense on the plains. Fifty percent chance to just not hit them on the plains, but only thirty percent in the forest. So as much as possible, you can try and bait those guys into the forest and then um, destroy them there. Uh, and meanwhile, we're gonna we're gonna blow up some some auxilla. If we can kill this guy off with our rain dancers before it gets to the real daytime then that's going to make life very easy. Well, easier. It's all about trying to kill off the enemy leaders. Um, you can you can afford to suicide some guys in order to do that, achieve that aim, um, which you'll notice a little bit more in the next level. There's a real tactic of trying to knock out the enemy leaders. <laughs> yep, so uh, poor auxiliary leader is dead, and the Lavinians, they don't, they don't give a fig. So now we're on to the real battle. And we get another upgraded unit. Uh, we'll take another Wind Lasher. Um, the War Mage is sort of a little bit more of a mixed type unit, whereas the Lasher is uh, the Lasher's more the range focus. But uh, it's just we're going to need their firepower. I'll probably bring the next one into a war mains just because I like having, like having a little bit of variety. But if especially if you can get them early, um, getting into the the, the wind lasher is a good thing because there's actually um, four levels of that unit. If you can advance, you know, if you kill everything in the world, you can make them a level four ultra super mage of doom, which is you know you got to you got to love having the ultra mage of doom units. Um, yeah, so I'm going to bring this guy right up here as much as possible. I'm going to try and set a little bit of a blockade of units, even if it's probably going to mean the suicide of those units. Um, less concerned about how much damage these auxilla can probably deal. Um, more concerned about more concerned about getting my guys into position to hold off the uh, the Lavinians. I mean, there's enough of them there that they're going to be a nuisance, but we're just going to hope for the best. You can see attacking melee against these archers, they've got no they've got no melee attack, so I can do all the damage I want, but unfortunately they've um they do have excellent resistance, so <laughs> and Auxilla just won't die. Um, they've got excellent resistance, so we're not doing a huge amount of damage to them. It takes a long time to kill these guys off. It's why the Lavinians are really quite hardy and annoying to deal with. <laughs> it doesn't help when they just hit all their attacks, does it? Right. The more of them we manage to bait into the trees, the better life is going to be here. Um, losing these cheap units is not a big concern. Um, the, these Lavinian units that we're fighting here are really quite expensive in comparison to my guys. As long as I'm not losing my rain dancers, I'm basically if I can trade almost one to one, I'm going to be happy with that deal. If I can trade, if I can trade two to one, I'm probably not too upset. Given that I care about warriors, not a wit. Um, sorry, fighters, not a wit. We changed the name in this last release. Uh, they're now Elvish Fighters. Um, just because yeah, I find it confusing when there are units in different factions named the same thing. 
um, even if I just call them all tanks or fighters or whatever, it's it's handy to have different names for shorthand reasons. Alright, so, middle of the daytime now, so I don't want to get into a big protracted fight with um, with the Lavinian legionaries, but I'm going to need to get a few more guys up there just to stop them breaking through my lines. Um, that's okay, so I'll, I'll send a couple of guys there to just beat up on some archers and hold hold the best terrain we possibly can. Uh, just yeah, try not to get into some big fights with the legionaries because they're just they're just monster damage dealers at the moment. The least amount of time, um, the the less fights we have with them, the better. So put some damage in the archers. Wait for wait for a more favourable time of day, uh, and spend time just gathering a little bit of experience for my rain dancers. So you can see these auxiliar, um, they're pretty fragile units, but they are super cheap. So it's, um, they're also just a really useful, if you're playing multiplayer, they're a, they're a very useful addition to a Lavinian army, just because they they don't care about time of day, and they're, they're really, really cheap. Um, they don't get, they don't get benefits from sort of the leadership powers of the Centurions and that sort of stuff, but realistically, um, when you're, when you're after a cheap unit, you not expecting it to live very long, you're just trying to get a little bit of a quick fix. So, they're a good unit for that. I'm going to get... Um, yeah, we might actually get a Fury, just because we're dealing with a lot of enemy archers there. Probably should put him here, but too late. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of archers and Furies. Uh, they're like crushers in the previous campaign, in the previous level, so they... Uh, They've got this ability where they just keep on hitting, and uh, they're pretty much a hard counter to the to the Lavinian archers. Even though the Lavinian archers, Lavinian bowmen, sort of just won't die. Um, it t takes a, a fury a couple of goes to kill them generally, but they they just keep trying. It's certainly a better option than going after them with the warriors. You can see the Lavinians have two types of attack here. One attack they get more of, but it does less damage, and one fire attack here, which is the the powerful one. And, uh, really ripped through my guys up there. But that's what those guys were for, so we won't complain. See, this uh, this is going pretty well timing-wise. We're six turns into a 16-turn level. As long as I don't lose my level 2 fighter there, I'm going to be incredibly happy with how this turned out. Um, if I do lose this level 2 fighter, well, we'll take it. But, yeah. Hey, it's not all yeah, a bit annoying when the enemy upgrades because uh, that means we've got to kill them all over again. When you get a level up, you get full bonuses um, all the way back to all the way back to full health, which is nice. But hey, on the plus side, I get to kill him and get um, all the experience for killing a level one unit, so I won't complain. Gonna get rid of this legionary that manages to manage to slip through our lines because we don't really want him there. You know, don't really have a whole lot of guys left up the top here. Can a Fury? You know, can't Fury can't get all the way through. So we've got to be a little bit careful about where we put him because he's um, he's fragile because uh, his ability to just keep on attacking works when the enemy attack him as well. And as you can see, sometimes he's going to get unlucky and he's going to get destroyed by <laughs> Lavinian auxiliary. So there's uh, bye bye to twenty gold. Yep, um, the game tries to pick which is the most effective attack, but uh, I would say probably ranged attacks against Lavinian Bowmen are not the most effective attack. You're, you're doing it wrong, basically, AI. Um, sometimes it'll, if there's even a slight chance to kill, it'll sort of give an attack more weight than it might otherwise, but it's generally not worth it. We're in, we're in here for the long haul. If we're trying to win a quick fight, yeah, maybe, but we're here to, um, you know, we're trying to conserve as many units as we can and uh, win, basically. So we don't want to. We don't want to risk taking extra damage that we don't need to take. Um, we're just going to wait till, wait till the dusk, and then we're going to send our rain dancer force here to go destroy that legion. Um, and I'm going to go jump that city just so that just so that legionary can't get in there, and really hope he doesn't completely rip my leader apart because that'll be embarrassing. Yeah. 
So I mean, this is this is shaping up pretty well. You just gotta, when you're dealing with Imperial era, you just gotta face the face the reality that you're gonna lose a bunch of guys and um, don't get too attached to them. I know they've got little names, but I find it easier not to look because I I do get a little bit attached to my guys, especially when they've been with me for a little while. So it's all a bit sad when they just get slaughtered, um, just because I'm using them as a a bit of a buffer. So we'll see if the Fury can do his job here. He's going to need to hit an awful lot of times in order to make that work. He just keeps going, but yeah, it's... Well. Once again, we're going to go after Vanier's backstab. Um, backstab ability here. The nice thing when attacking uh, legionaries is when they defend they only attack with their shield so yes it does a lot of damage but if they miss that first time they're not going to do any more damage to you. Um, and it's much nicer than attacking them ranged when they can slow you like this which means you do half damage for the rest of the turn which is just mean. It's really quite uncomfortable. Um, yeah we'll sacrifice that warrior we don't care about him. Um, and yeah it's getting into dusk so our attacks are starting to do more, their attacks are starting to really ease up. Um, I'm going to try and drop Rain Dancers in here, take out these archers. I know really this one's probably a higher priority, but I'm really interested still in getting uh, getting experience points on Rain Dancers as much as possible. Um, yeah, maybe we'll see if this guy gets lucky and does the job. He might. I really miss that lightning animation. I, I don't know what... I haven't changed anything. Very upsetting when uh, things just don't quite work like they ought to. Um, yeah. Still, this fight... This fight's going pretty well. Leave myself with plenty of times to beat up on the enemy leader. Oh, man. Wind lashes have got... They're really... They're really quite great. Uh... Where are we going to go with him? Let's go around there, just for the sake of it. As much as possible, going to leave these kills for rain dancers. Um, it's a, sort of a bit of a negative way to play. I play the game, I guess, but uh, the computer's not going to care, not going to complain about it. So we'll um, we'll let it slide. Yeah, that's that's one lucky fighter. Um, to be perfectly honest, that. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be able to destroy those guys. They're trying to sort of build a formation there. They get a small bonus for being next to each other, but when you've got that much health, it really doesn't matter. Um, gonna kill this guy and uh, make a day of it. <laughs> or we can just go poke at him for a while and not not kill anything. That's that's an option too. Yeah, so at the night time, you can see my rain dancers. They're doing nine damage every time they hit, as long as they hit. It's really hard to tell when they hit without lightning, but uh, when they hit, they do a lot of damage. So really pretty happy with how this turned out. Sometimes, sometimes they sort of get below those trees before you get a chance to take them out. This level can become a little bit of a slog and you really start pushing up against the time limit but um, this time we managed to secure those with those wanderers quick I really really think um, going sort of heavy with a wanderer loadout on this level is the way to play it um, when the first versions of this campaign you didn't even have wanderers at this point you didn't have wanderers you just had uh, just had fighters and um, fighters and rain dancers and furies and this is back when the Furies were even more nerfed than they are now, so it made it a pretty sort of one-sided battle. With with the Wanderers, it's it works a lot better. Um, you still got to rely really heavily on the Rain Dancers, but I mean that's that's what the Seed are all about. It's just about protecting your Rain Dancers and and dealing the damage with them where you can. Um, this is really setting us up really nicely. A couple of level two, well, we've got three level two Rain Dancers now. Um, so win, two wind lashes and a and a storm lord, war mage. Sorry, not a storm lord. Um, that's that's really gonna that's really gonna make life a lot easier in the future. So unfortunately, this is the end of the night time. So we're gonna want to get a lot of damage in on that centurion mighty fast in order to do that. We might try and bait him out with this wanderer. Um, he's got a lot of experience, so he's a good looking target. 
think that uh, cares about experience as a target chooser. I honestly don't know. Um, this campaign still using the old Wesnoth AI. There is, I believe, since I last sort of played the game more regularly, they've actually greatly improved the AI, but um, a lot of the user campaigns won't, won't ever update to the new AI because um, they're sort of... Uh, making a campaign is a delicate balance issue thing, and... Um, you know, when you get when you get it right, if you get it right, you sort of wanna um, sort of wanna not mess with it anymore. So when the AI gets smarter, that can really throw some of your campaigns out of whack. So yeah, this centurion, as I mentioned earlier, he's just he's just good. I mean, he's got a, he's got an excellent melee attack. Um, he's also got this slow ability on his ranged attacks, which is just mean. Um, so I might lose one of my little army of rain dancers here, um, but not too upset if I do. Um, I'm going to try as much as possible, you know, good good Wisnoth practices, as much as possible before you finish the level. Get as much experience as you can into all your guys. You know, um, one point of experience here and there really adds up. Can't quite get Vanieri in to get that kill. So the question is, do I make sure we can kill him by bringing the Wanderer in here or give him the damage? We'll give him the damage because he's going to level up with that, I would say. And... No, not quite. We'll have him in a good position for next time. This Fury can't do anything, so... Kill off the Centurion, finish up the level in a very satisfying kind of way, or not. Yep, well, that happens. So we'll bring the Fury up just in case he should be able to help us deal with that archer. We're probably going to lose a rain dancer for our trouble there. I would say, oh gosh, no, we're going to lose our wind lasher. That's, oh, okay. Um, yeah, you know what? I think in this situation I actually want to put the experience into my fury. Uh, Furies just need a ludicrous amount of experience to level up. Um... Uh, we'll try it. If he manages to get the kill off, we'll, we'll give it to him, but since he it's now daytime and we do no damage, he probably won't manage to do that. He does. Yep. So what we're going to do here is uh, try and get another guy up to level 2. Um, we lost one of our level 2s there, so we're feeling a little bit foolish because we overextended, thinking we were fine. But, um, hey, that's the level. Livinians are down. Uh, we've Gone, you know, gone through with a, a pretty decent sort of setup. Uh, didn't do as get as much experience as we might have liked, considering how well we started off. But um, altogether, we got seventy five gold to go into the next level, so that's that's a good outcome. Uh, so that's um, that's too late. Uh, next level is called just in time. 